So, this is our time. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening to all the participants, dear excellencies, dear friends around the world. Welcome to the side event organized by Women's Federation for World Peace International with support and co-organizer co from Father Con NGO located in Los Angeles. This NGO is working specially with men to encourage them in their responsibilities as husbands and fathers. Many thanks to the Commission of Crime Prevention and Social Justice for giving us opportunity to present good practices to the governments and civil society. Our presentation starts with the place where we all are born, and this is the family. The role of parents is first love giver and caregiver, first educator to all of us. I am happy to welcome also representative of two embassies. They could accept our invitation. First is Her Excellency, Mrs. Irene Susan Natividad, representative of Philippines. She is in Vienna since April this year and we could meet her in person yesterday. We are very thankful that she could accept us. She is... Uh, working in very uh, many different uh, realm of, of responsibility as diplomat, especially in the realm of international relationships and international laws. She worked, uh, she is working about 30 years uh, with the foreign affairs embassy, um, embassies from Philippines in, she participated, she represented Philippines in Milan, Italy, in New York, in Singapore, in Honolulu, and many other places. She will greet us. So, Mrs. Her Excellency, Mrs. Natividad, thank you for joining us. The floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. Real. Um, Mrs. Renate Ames Bauer. Um, the other officers and members of the um, Women's Federation for World Peace, uh, colleagues, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I know many of you are joining from uh, different parts of the world, so uh, I also would like to greet you a pleasant afternoon for those here in Europe. <laughs> uh, a good evening, a good morning uh, for those in the other side of the world and uh, later maybe a restful evening for those joining us <laughs> from the Americas and other parts of the world. The uh, embassy and the permanent mission of the Philippines here in Vienna is very pleased to be invited to participate um, in this event uh, organized by WFWP. Um, at the 31st session of the CCPCJ on the topic strengthening family relationships as a means for crime prevention with focus on the role of parents. As a parent myself, I share the aspirations of other parents that my children grow up in a world that is safe and where they never have to experience violence, hatred, or discrimination. But to make that dream a reality, I as a parent have to make it my mission to instill in the minds of my children and grandchildren the values of peace, tolerance over differences, respect for the law, hard work, taking responsibility, and other values that will make them productive members of our community. Creating peaceful communities, preventing crimes, shunning violence, all start with families who value all this, who will teach these values to its members, who will provide support to members when these values are challenged, and, he will, and who will continue to guide members, especially the young and impressionable, 
on a path away from crime, vice, and other harmful activities. Filipinos are family-centered people. And I think this is not something unique to us. Uh, many other cultures, Asian, Lat Latin Americans, Africans, all have this uh, sense of family. And um, our own constitution, the Philippines, Philippine constitution recognizes the important role of the family in nation building. Uh, in fact, there's a provision in our constitution that says that the state recognizes the Filipino family as the foundation of the nation and shall strengthen its solidarity and promote its total development. Strong families make strong communities, strong communities make strong societies, and they make stronger nations. I look forward to listening to other speakers today who will share their thoughts and initiatives on how strong family relations and networks have been successful in steering its members away from crime and safeguarding peace in our communities. Thank you. Thank you very much, Her Excellency, Mrs. Natividad. Now is a big pleasure for me to welcome and introduce to you uh, another representative from uh, Embassy of Cambodia. Uh, very, uh, we, we knew many years ago about your country when it, it were lots of fighting there. Now we are happy that your country is living in peace and then that you support also the development and we wish very much to support your country in this way. Um, Mrs. Sogneam Sim is representing uh, Cambodian Embassy in Brussels. So thank you very much to joining us from Brussels. And uh, she studied in, in Panasastra University in Cambodia and uh, participated in training courses for ASEAN diplomats in India and China. She has uh, professional experiences in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation in departments for America and Africa. And since 2021, she is appointed to her current position. Welcome to our meeting and the floor is yours, Mrs. Sim. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, good, good afternoon, Excellency. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today I am very delighted to join this program that I have great honor to join this program uh, on behalf of the uh, his Excellency, Mr. Nong Sako, the ambassador of Cambodia in Brussels. And first of all, I would like to thank uh, Mrs. Dr. Uh, Maria Ria, the director of the Women Federation for World Peace, for warm welcoming me to take opportunity to me uh, to deliver a remark. Thank you, Madam. Uh, oh, he, Excellency uh, is very pleased to hear about this important topic and uh, he wants to listen to the valuable project uh, both of country and other countries. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, he wants to listen to uh, drugs and uh, society in the, the uh, in uh, strengthening youth and our family uh, through a program in cooperation with our respective government. Uh, because uh, the family unit uh, is such an important factor and a uh, value support for children and or, or young people. Uh, it is the place where uh, our children learn uh, important value, uh, like to respect uh, order, uh, despite uh, various background, uh, how learn to take responsibility for their future family and uh, the surrounding. Uh, it is also the family where once learn about resolving uh, conflict peacefully and or 
all the important value. So parents need to, to be well educated about their role and responsibility and get the necessary support to fulfill this uh, in order to have more healthy or family uh, willing to a uh, more healthy in a society. Yeah, thank you. And I hope this uh, event successfully. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Mrs. Sim. Now is a big pleasure for me to invite our next lady. She is working with us, uh, Kyongin van der Ven from, from Holland. She will continue and she will introduce all the projects what we have and introduce also the speakers. Thank you, Mrs. Oliveira. Nice Thank to see you. Thank you very much, uh, Maria, Dr. Rio. Thank you so much. And a very warm welcome again to all of you, dear uh, ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies, and very welcome to our side event of the 31st Commission of Crime Prevention and Criminal Justice. Uh, with the topic strengthening family relationships as means for crime prevention and especially the role of parents. We are very happy um, to uh, present um, beautiful projects and inspiring speakers. Uh, but first of all, I would like to make a practical announcement. Um, if you would have any questions to one of the speakers, please put them in the chat and address them to the host. So put your question in the chat uh, to the host and please also note your uh, contact information and for whom the question is. So we will make sure that the questions are forwarded to the designated speaker. Um, as time is short, we will not have time to, um, um, to um, address the questions within, the, uh, within this um, time period, but after the formal closing, uh, after two o'clock, we can uh, take a few questions um, um, to uh, answer. So again, very welcome. Um, I'm very happy to present first our first speaker, Mr. Patrick Erlinson. Mr. Patrick Erlinson is the founder and director of FatherCon. FatherCon is our co-organizer of this event. So thank you very much, Mr. Erlinson. And Mr. Erlinson is born and raised in Los Angeles. He has been of service all over the world and since 2010 working with the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees in Los Angeles. Um, and after learning uh, about human trafficking in organs, he began leading the prevention subcommittee of the Long Beach Human Trafficking Task Force in 2012. And after conversations with numerous survivors of exploitation, the critical link was missing abusive, direct, distracted fathers creating vulnerability and entitlement in their children. And he was speaking on the topic, human trafficking, fathers, the overlooked link to prevention. Mr. Patrick, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm not gonna be in control of the slides. <laughs> um, I really wanna thank everyone, especially the, the Commission of Crime Prevention and Criminal Justice um, of the UNODC and also Women's Federation for World Peace. I mean, giving me this opportunity to present here today. Um, one of the greatest gifts of my life came through WFWP when my wife, my, my Japanese wife went on a medical mission to Niger, Africa, leaving me in Japan with our two daughters. Um, thankfully they survived my cooking and it was such a humbling experience to see actually how much my wife accomplished on a daily basis um, in taking care of children. And so I'm deeply thankful to WFWP for that. Um, and as was said, my, my introduction, let's see the next slide. My introduction came through my working with USA for UNHCR and especially around organ trafficking, which we were getting reports from, from East Africa kind of, of, of refugees escaping from South Sudan and other countries and then being, um, taken in by, by groups of Bedouins who would then harvest their organs and leave them in the desert. That just slammed into my heart and I couldn't, I couldn't turn away from it. And that's what kind of made a change in my life where I started to investigate everything I could on human trafficking. Um, so I started working with the task force in Long Beach and that just kind of really directed me to two areas. Next slide. 
Um, so in looking at prevention, um, the two things that really stood out to me were culture, that we had a culture that was um, increasingly normalizing exploitive behavior. Um, so in that regard, I started a, a film and art festival for the awareness of, and prevention of human trafficking. But the other was fathers. Um, and the, the absence and abuse of fathers was, it's so well chronicled as a significant disruptor of child development. But I began to hear from survivors of human trafficking, their stories of their fathers, stepfathers, foster fathers, of the divorce that kind of set them on a course to become trafficked. And of course, through the foster care system. And, and this just seemed to be a glaring overlook that fathers were playing this critical role in, in the supply and the demand of human trafficking. Um, when I started looking at fathers, why are fathers so significant? Next slide. There are now 50 years of studies on fatherhood that detail the many ways that fathers contribute to child development. When dads are engaged and present, both the mother and the children are healthier. When they read to children, the literacy rates and language retention rise. When fathers play with their kids, they learn empathy. They learn that they're safe and can take risks. And most importantly, they learn that they're worthy of being loved. Next slide. One very inspiring example of a father's impact on a child is in the relationship with Malala Yousafzai and her father. When fathers get it right, children rise to the challenges of the 21st century in awesome ways. Fathers are critically important, which does not mean mothers are not, but there's a, there's a very special kind of supportive role that fathers play. And when it's not there, there's a vulnerability created. Next slide. The things children experience and witness as they're growing up are given meaning by their young minds. As Dr. Meg Meeker put it, nothing we say or do as parents is neutral. Everything said or not said, done or not done, is being given meaning by children, which may establish beliefs and behaviors for a lifetime. Which in Malala's case, her father's refusal to give her, give, give her, keep her from getting an education meant she was valued and loved and should regard her life as a treasure and that she could make a difference. However, for too many boys and girls, their fathers are distracted, absent, or even abusive. The number of children experiencing familial trafficking is much higher than previously believed. There are alarming reasons for this. One can be found in the number of fathers who are molested as children by a trusted adult which is about, in the United States alone, about 700,000 boys per year. Many of these boys become fathers, bringing their unacknowledged or unhealed trauma into their home. Some of these fathers are terrified of becoming abusers themselves, so deprive their children of necessary intimacy. Having fathers not fully aware of the consequences of their absence causes children to suffer, self-harm, and in the worst case, become vulnerable to the manipulation of human traffickers. We have fathers slipping through the cracks and leaving sons and daughters to be preyed upon by traffickers. Many of these are good men who are slipping, not monsters. We can prevent their descent if we determine it's worth the effort. Some of the ways fathers are intersecting with human trafficking is through their own behavior. Pornography is taking a heavy toll on fathers and families as it steals time from loved ones, weakens moral authority and alters sexual appetites. The apparent willingness through pornography of women and children to be used as objects for gratification draws many men further into the commercial sex industry. Next slide. Daughters are deprived of a father's affection and attention, are left more vulnerable to whoever they meet online, which is the go-to place for hundreds of thousands of predators to find children willing to talk, complain about their parents, and seek friendship with strangers, or those who disguise themselves as friends of friends, which is so common now through Instagram and Facebook. Next slide. And sons as well are coming out of our homes feeling angry, entitled, and justified in pursuing a view of manliness gathered from sources other than a responsible father because of the lack of a father or a father figure. Pornography is also shaping how boys should look at and what to expect from relationships with women. 
many people ask, next slide. Many people ask why I called my organization FatherCon. And there are a few reasons. A con confronting lies, conversation and conference. Next slide. A con is a deception used to manipulate someone. Cons are lies to get you to behave a certain way. Today, there are many lies that overpromise and underdeliver, such as pornography. Everyone's doing it. No one's getting hurt. Or lies that fathers are not important in children's character development. Or my kids will be better off without me. Next slide. And through conversation, especially between husband and wife, parents and children, we develop trust and create accountability, honesty and real intimacy. Next slide. Then through our annual conference, we gather as fathers, future fathers and father figures of all races, faiths, backgrounds, all looking to get informed, inspired and ignited to be better protectors and providers of love and support for children and communities. Next slide. Some of the things FatherCon is doing outside of the conference is providing safe spaces for fathers to get real and get healed and trained on such topics as cyber safety. Next slide. At our recent conference, we held over 20 workshops with expert preventers, presenters from across the country sharing about topics relevant to fatherhood and human trafficking. Next slide. To, to inspire everyone, we gave three Heart of the Father Awards to exceptional fathers who have gone above and beyond to care for children across the country and around the world. They each had amazing stories to tell and the, and the testimonies of people who heard their stories was just remarkable. Next slide. And to Ignite, we had over 40 resource organizations and agencies with opportunities for action. Um, fathers connected with organizations to become foster parents and mentors. Young men and women got excited to prepare for the time they will have children. I heard of one young man who he keeps a, an empty picture frame next to his bed as a constant reminder of his future wife. So it, it helped him to kind of prevent future regret. Um, next slide. What happens in our homes doesn't stay in our homes. And that's cause for alarm, but it's also really cause for, for excitement, that if we get things right in our homes, it spills out into the community and changes our communities. Um, next slide. I don't have time to go over all the things we have planned. Um, next slide. Um, I'm, I believe I'm out of time, um, but I really want everyone to reach out and find out more about what we're doing and how to engage fathers in the prevention of, of crime and especially human trafficking. Um, I'm really, really grateful for your, your time. And really, as fathers are, are so much a part of the problem. Men are so much a part of the problem that we're seeing, especially in human trafficking, that when they get educated, informed, and inspired, they make a world of difference. Um, thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, Mr. Erlinson. Thank you so much for your amazing work and uh, uh, stressing this very crucial point of fatherhood for uh, healthy families and healthy societies. Thank you so much. Um, as uh, time is continuing, I uh, would like to um, announce the next speaker. Um, we're very happy to welcome Dr. Ala Elkhani. Uh, she's a human humanitarian psychologist, internal and international consultant, drug prevention and health friends of the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime. Um, she, uh, Dr. Elkhani, researches and develops innovative ways to reach families that have experienced conflict and displacement with parenting support and training. She's a, she's a developer of numerous family skills resources, as well as a global trainer of family skills programs and research methods, and having conducted training in over 15 countries. Uh, Mrs. Elhani is a humanitarian psychologist and works as a consultant at the UNODC, as mentioned. And she is also an honorary research associate at the University of Man Manchester at the Division of Psychology and Mental Health. Her current work collaborates the efforts of the UNODC and the, um, and the University of Manchester in developing and evaluating family skilled programs 
in countries such as Afghanistan, Palestine, Serbia, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Indonesia, and Lebanon. Ala is passionate about highlighting the significant role that caregivers play in protecting their children during conflict and displacement. Very welcome, Mrs. Elghani. And um, Mrs. Elghani will be talking to us about utilizing family skills as a tool of prevention. Mrs. Elghani, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you to CCPCJ and Women's Federation of World Peace and all the organizers and the attendees for this really important event. And hello from a typically rainy Manchester day today. So in this presentation, I'm going to expand on the excellent presentation by Patrick on the role of caregivers. I will be addressing both mothers and the fathers. I'm going to provide you with examples um, from the field on how utilizing Family skills interventions is key to preventing a number of negative outcomes, including criminal activities, substance use, as well as other negative um, physical, mental and social outcomes. I'm going to be showing you a few examples of how UNODC have been implementing resources that do just that globally to inspire you to possibly do the same in your communities that you are supporting. And I'll provide you with links to the open access resources that we have as well. So let's focus on the family. The family is a social institution that is so powerful in the lives of children. These are people with shared genes, history, daily experiences, and a future. We often underestimate the role of the family in preventing so many outcomes um, that, and this is so important, there's an assumption that caregivers automatically know how to best care for their children when they become parents. But actually, it's really not that easy. And any of us who are parents will know that at times it's really complex and through different phases of our child's development, we can really struggle, particularly if we're going through hard circumstances that are stressful or living in challenged or low resource settings. The relationship that parents have with their children is the primary most important factor in their future well-being. That's in their emotional and mental health development and really significantly in reducing the likelihood of them becoming engaged in risky behaviors like drug use, criminal activity, and sexual experiences that can be harmful. When we parent effectively, we can avoid so many negative outcomes. But when caregivers struggle and use harsh, inconsistent parenting, there's significantly an increase in the likelihood of poor outcomes in our children. So it's really important that we are focusing on the caregivers. So all families in all contexts can really benefit from family skills resources that promote family protective factors like communication, trust, problem solving and conflict resolution. But what about families that are experiencing parenting under stress or challenged circumstances? Families living in low resource areas, families with an ill family member, parents going through a hard divorce, families going through a global pandemic. Any of us really can fit in this category of parenting under stress at some stage. So what do families need then? Well, science and research on family skills tells us that families need the same things they need outside of extreme stress contexts, but they need an even greater focus on the family, how to deal with adult and child stress, the value of using love and limits in our parenting, for example, how to encourage the behavior we want and discourage the misbehavior. What if we consider now families experiencing conflict and displacement? The role of the caregiver then is even further magnified. Often actually it's the only support institution that will remain for children when everything else is lost. But sadly, research tells us that children that have experienced conflict are much more likely to experience violent discipline and, and are more at risk. Though we know that these children can be protected by warm, secure parenting. And this is why UNODC has been focusing for many years on developing parenting resources for families experiencing conflict. The Ukraine crisis is not the first crisis, nor sadly will it be the last that we will experience. But this has really brought the needs of caregivers in conflict to global attention. And many of our UNODC resources are now being used in conflict settings and are also being used to help and support Ukrainian families. I've mentioned the term family programs or family resources, but what are they? Children don't come with manuals. 
and all families in all contexts can benefit from family skills programs that aim to strengthen family protective factors. When families take part in such resources, they often have better mental health, physical and social outcomes for the future, and are less likely to take part in criminal activities and other risky behaviors. Also, supporting families is very cost effective with research finding a return of almost $10 for every dollar spent implementing family skills prevention programs. So in response to this identified gap that we identified of a lack of family skills resources based on that are open source and evidence-based, we began developing and implementing family skills programs that can be accessible to meet this need. And we've developed a work around this model of family multi-level parenting support delivery for families living through challenges and stress. And at each level, families can be supported with skills dependent on how much resources are available in their area and how much need there is. And I'm going to take you through these very briefly. So recognizing how all families can benefit from parenting information, on a universal level, at the bottom level here in yellow, we developed a basic parenting information leaflet and we distributed this to begin with in a conflict zone inside Syria. We conducted a trial called the Bread Wrapper Study where we distributed 3,000 of these in a conflict zone via an NGO along with a questionnaire and a pen by wrapping them inside bread wrappers. We had an almost astonishing response rate of 60% responded and engaged with this questionnaire and asked for more help. And this caregiver leaflet has now been adapted to the European refugee crisis and is being, is being used globally, both inside Ukraine now and also the neighboring countries. And I will have a link for anyone who wants to access this later. Basic parenting information, such as how to support your child, how to help them and help yourself, maintaining routine, giving praise to your children, listening and communicating. Feedback from the leaflet distribution was that caregivers wanted more advice. So the next level up in the model I showed you, we developed a light parenting intervention that consists of a parenting booklet and associated conversation group seminar. So parents receive this booklet that demonstrates key parenting skills in a really simple and engaging way, like building parental confidence, self-regulatory skills, and enhancing child and family psychological well-being. They can also take part in a two hour conversation group that's associated with this. And we've developed booklets for many different contexts, including parenting during conflict, parenting in crisis, and caring for your child during COVID-19. And these, have, these are now available in multiple languages and are being used and really engaged well with globally. So please do access that if something of interest to you. Let's have a look at the general themes inside these booklets. So we begin always by normalizing to the caregiver the stresses that they may be facing and what they can do to help themselves, what their children are facing and how they can help their children. We look at the ideas of providing warmth and support, managing fears, anxieties, and night disturbances, for example. We really focus on communication, listening and talking and managing fights and aggression and other misbehavior. And we also recognize the need to have specific information on dealing with the challenges of, of caregiving teenagers. Moving up in our model now and getting higher as we have more intensity and more resources available, we reach this third level in orange where families may be stable enough to undertake multi-session programs. And here at UNODC, we've developed two multi-session family skills programs. And I'm gonna describe one as an example, and that's Strong Families. The other is Family United. Strong Families is a universal prevention intervention for families with the aim of improving parenting skills, child well-being, and family mental health. Caregivers and children take part in this program that lasts for three weeks. And key features are it's designed for families living in challenge settings. It's developed ensuring it to be really brief and also light requiring an infrastructure that's really easy to mobilize and train. And training is aimed at lay people of many different backgrounds. We've now piloted and implemented strong families in over 20 countries in the last few years. And we have multiple evaluation published papers. And in all of these, we have found significant improvements in child behavior, 
well-being, parental confidence, and family adjustments. And we're now making steps to utilize strong families in the European context to fill the gap of, exist of an existing overburdened health system in our European countries. And this is our next steps with strong families. So in summary, we need to make use of this really wonderful protective shield that caregivers can be for their children through their early development and through adolescence, recognizing the importance even more during challenging and stressful times. And we can do this by ensuring access to family skills resources. We find caregivers are often already motivated and already are trying to find help. So when we provide them with this toolbox of effective caregiving skills, we're reducing the negative effects that stressful times can have on caregivers and their children. And we're helping to empower them to a much healthier future. So here we have in front of you two of our UNODC landing pages. And I'm gonna provide links of these in the chat of this meeting. The one on the left is where all the resources that I have just mentioned will be found in many different languages. So please do have a look at that. And the one on the right is another fantastic UNODC campaign page called Listen First that is filled with numerous resources for caregivers and children in multiple languages, evidence-informed educational videos and written materials. So please do have a look at those both and share. Thank you for your time and your attention, and I look forward to the next presentations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Alkhani, for your beautiful contribution and presentation. And great to see that the UNODC is working so hard to uh, strengthen families, um, especially uh, the parents, the caregivers of the children. Thank you so much. And then we continue with our next speaker. Our next speaker is Mrs. Amira Grace Mayo. She's the president of the Women's Federation for World Peace in the Philippines. And uh, she has uh, presented a video presentation for us, but I will first uh, introduce uh, her a little bit more. Uh, she has been a public school teacher for 13 years and she worked in a child development home program. And as a provider of this program, she attended various developmental trainings, which includes creative curriculum for family child care that focuses on individual child observations. And um, she is also an enthusiastic lecturer in family development sessions, drug prevention and pure love education, and so much more. Um, and uh, at the, currently the domestic peace education program is a pilot project of the Women's Federation uh, of the Philippines, which aims to strengthen Filipino families towards a peaceful nation and to uplift the women as peacemakers who can initiate building loving relationships within the family. So thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Mayo, for being here. And we will uh, share your contribution, your video. So let us play the video, please. Women's Federation for World Peace Philippines we would like to extend our sense of gratitude to Women's Federation for World Peace International for granting our domestic peace education program as one of the funding. Caloocan City in the Philippines, and this was crafted considering SDG number five gender equality is DJ number 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions, and is DJ number 17, partnerships for the goals. Domestic peace education program aims to uplift the women as peacemakers who can initiate building love relationships among the family. And this module was created by the gender and development professional to provide one of the firm solutions against domestic violence. Both husband and wife can realize their focus necessary to the family through experiencing the program. Then children in the family witnessing the strong bonding of their parents will be encouraged to participate further in youth program. The program was launched last March 10, 2021, in the middle of pandemic. 
It was graced by some local government officials like the village chairwoman and councillor. A week after a hard lockdown was implemented due to COVID-19 pandemic. Amid the situation, we determined to start the project last July 10, four months after it was launched. The module was designed especially for this project. It was titled Guide for Mother in Local Language, Gabay Kainanay. In order to follow safety health protocols, there were two batches of orientation, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. The module has 12 different weekly tasks, specifically focusing on the wife's gesture of love toward her husband. The number of participants for this project were adjusted from 100 down to 80 in order to heed the government protocols. And some couples temporarily live separately because of pandemic. Then one community leader, Ms. Ninita Ibasen, who took care of a group of women sadly passed away due to COVID-19 infection. Many obstacles and challenges were encountered along the way, but we are grateful that we were still able to push through the program. At the end of the week, participants are to submit the complex module with their reflection. And here are some photos to show some of the tasks in the module. The 12 week long program was successfully concluded last November 14, and there were 28 participants who completed the module and graduated. And during the graduation ceremony, the village councillor, Honorable Aureliano, who is one of the hosts of this project, accepted a certificate of appointment as a city leader of Women's Federation for All Peace in Caloocan City, Philippines. And now, let us watch and listen some of the participants as they share their memorable experiences as they went through the program and how happy and grateful they were to be part of the program. Let's all watch this. pinakamahalagang ano na naranasan ko sa module ay eh, yung exercise tuwing umaga andun po yun at saka yung paggawa po ng puzzle kasi syempre kasama ko po yung asawa ko at saka yung ipagtimpla po siya ng kape kada umaga kasi hindi ko po talaga siya minsan ginagawa pero dahil sa module na yun ay eh, nagagawa ko siya ng isang linggo at saka sabi ng asawa ko oh maaga ka ata gumising pa sabi ko hindi para ipagtimpla kita ng kape sabi ko ganun yun lang Maraming salamat po sa inyo at dahil pinagbigyan nyo kami ng panahon na maranasan yung mga ganito at saka masaya kami na nakasali kami sa mga gawain tulad na ito. Para sa akin, ang tumatak po sa puso ko, ito yung uh, sasabihan mo yung asawa mo araw-araw na I love you, na kahit nagagalit ka, dapat pa natilihin yung love para lalo pang tumibay ang pagkasama ng mag-asama. Uh, maraming salamat po sa bumubuo ng Women's Federation uh, dahil dito marami kami natutunan na magagamit namin sa paamin pang araw-araw. Uh, yung pagbuo ng pasel kasi kahit mahirap uh, nagawa, namin, nagawa pa rin namin eh, uh, tutulungan kami mag-asama. 
kami po ang kami po mag-asawa ay lubos na nagpapasalamat sa Women's Federation dahil sa nagkaroon ng ganitong module bagamat uh, maraming uh, activities pero masaya at maraming kaming natutunan maraming naalala ng mga gawa, gawain at may, may ipakita din ng pagmamahal ng amin pagmamahal at kabanting kami mag-asawa lalo na yung pasil at saya yung tumatak na challenge namin bilang mag-asawa ay yung isang linggo niya akong pinagtimplan po ang kape. Uh, nagpapasalamat po kaming mag-asawa sa Women's Federation at sa mga bumubuo nito at sa mga project na ibinababa nila sa amin kasi uh, mas lalo pa nitong napagtitiba yung pagsasama naming mag-asawa. Thank you so much for this beautiful presentation of the uh, Women's Federation in the Philippines. Very beautiful project that, that stresses the importance of uh, the relationship uh, of parents, uh, of, of partners, um, the relationship, uh, the love relationship, the harmony in the family and the importance uh, for the whole family uh, and the upbringing of the children and the harmony of the village and society then uh we uh we're going getting a little bit over time I'm very sorry about that i hope you can all stay with us we will present uh the last speaker uh is mrs takahashi she is the the president of the women's federation for world peace in cambodia um she is of japanese nationality uh but married to a cambodian and from the very beginning she's been working for non-profit organizations helping improve health and educational standards locally. And currently she's conducting and further developing the Healthy Family Program that's strengthening the role of parents and supporting youth in becoming more resilient towards influences that jeopardize their healthy development. And uh, Mrs. Takahashi has very welcome. You have always also prepared a, a video for us. So let us uh, watch the video and um, let us see your beautiful project. Hello, I am from WFWP in Cambodia. I'd like to present how we work on this issue in case of Cambodia. Our activities are actually fully cooperated by the royal government here. On this occasion, I'd like to express our gratitude to the government of Cambodia. Well, we are conducting programs to deliver family value education, to protect young people, and to aim to achieve more peaceful and secure society over here. We focus on two potential risk factors behind the youth crime issues. Uh, of course, these are not the only reasons and they don't apply in all cases. I just mean we chiefly concern. The first point is they are influenced a lot from information, most of which is from abroad. After the civil war, with a lot of help from abroad, the nation has developed rapidly, especially in recent years. And the youth has been exposed more and more information. It seems they tend to unconditionally accept what they get through media is good. Starting from fashions and actions, uh, which are somehow different from traditions. It affects their way of thinking and style of life. And at the same time, criminals also try to attract the youth through such media to get them involved in crimes. Meanwhile, the second point is, in poor communities, parents stay far from home for a long period of time to work. That also often causes divorce, making another family separation. In addition, many children have to start working to support their families even before graduating from junior high. And some of them are willing to work at nightlife jobs or shady jobs for better payment. Based on such background, we presume 
One of the factors that drives the youth to undesirable deeds can be that there are not enough opportunities for parent-child communication, including teaching ethics at home. Therefore, we are advocating how the family originally should be, the role of fatherhood and motherhood to protect the youth from crime and immorality. Our target so far was parents and guardians, educators and social leaders. As I mentioned, we are cooperating with the government of Cambodia, mainly with Ministry of Civil Service. That ministry supervises all civil servants and public organizations and works for administration in general and reformation of national systems. Regarding this family value education since 2020, first of all, we introduced a lecture to the trainees of Royal School of Administration, so called RSA, which is an educational institution in the Ministry of Civil Service. And we ask them to be lecturers. So this is how we are doing. And uh, we started to talk to parents. Actually, the cooperating RSC trainees did. But the priority area, the higher the priority for people to secure their daily lives. People are very busy to secure their daily needs as reality. And then we started to reach out to civil officers. That means the teachers of public schools and the governmental leaders. In that way, it can be more effective. They I mean, most of them are parents anyway, and what is good is, they are in the position in the society that they can also teach the content to others. So these are the teachers. Sometimes when RSA had some independent projects, we were allowed to have our lectures incorporated in these projects. Here we invited monks to our programs for cooperation. Monks said the great symbol of morality in Cambodia as a Buddhist nation. Um, we tried to convey messages in a way that suits the local culture here. Um, we try not just insisting one idea. And uh, for social leaders, who are actually governmental officers. This is one administration training course launched by RSA with National Authority for Combating Drugs. The course was for the officers of National Authority for Combating Drugs. There, we also provided lectures as one of the course credits. And successfully completed. We also had the program right in RSA. Actually, RSA is the place where official personnel from central and local government gather to learn. We lectured for about 1,000 such officers so far. Because of pandemic, actually, it was done online, though. We prepared reading materials, too, from the slides. We expect that a correct understanding of the value and role of the family will lead to a fundamentally better society. In the lecture, we explained common problems that young people have behind crimes based on statistics, the importance for parents to stay close to their children, 
based on psychological development, parents' responsibility to show indicators of life in their daily lives, along with affection and so on. We eagerly emphasized our responsibility as parents, as educators or leaders, to foster the mental core within the youth, who should lead the future, so that they can judge what is right, what is good or wrong by themselves, not easily influenced by the surroundings, but rather they can take responsibility for their actions, and so that they can find the meaning of their own lives. This year, we are intended to access college students too. Since a society consists of individuals, by having each person reveal his or her own meaning of life, we are aiming for a future in which people can live in a rightful and peaceful manner. That's it from Cambodia. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Women's Federation uh, Cambodia. Thank you very much, Mrs. Takahashi, for preparing this beautiful contribution and, uh, um, expo uh, and enriching us with your beautiful project. Very inspiring and uh, I think very great work. Uh, as we know, all starts in the family and um, um, building beautiful global citizens. It all starts in a harmonious family and that's always uh, a good challenge for all of us, and especially in, um, in, in situations where not all is there. Um, so we're coming to the end of our event. Uh, so many beautiful uh, projects were shared and so little time to know more. Um, strengthening family relationships as a means for crime prevention and especially the role of parents. And I'm very happy um, to, uh, that Mrs. Henschen uh, is here with us for the closing remarks. Uh, Mrs. Henschen is the president of the NGO Committee on the Status of Women at the United Nations in Geneva, and the director of the Women's Federation for World Peace International, Office for United Nations Relations Globally, coordinator for Europe and Middle East, International Associ Association of First Ladies for Peace, and vice president of Women's Federation for World Peace International. And a little bit more, but I will stop there. Mrs. Henschen, very welcome. And um, yeah, please extend the closing remarks. Yes, thank you so much. It was really a, a wonderful event. So many, not only practical ideas, but uh, good, um, so many solutions presented actually. Huh? Um, thank you for giving me this opportunity just to give a few closing thoughts. And for those who have contributed to this very uplifting event, uh, especially Your Excellency from Philippines and Cambodia, UNODC and our uh, civil society participants, thank you. And of course, to the Women's Federation Vienna for their tireless efforts to, uh, to prepare this event, but also many, many other uh, activities that they are overseeing and coordinating in connection with the UN in Vienna. For decades, we tried to prove that leaving family out of the equation would better explain and serve our goals at the United Nations. Fortunately, we come back around again to this point with a different perspective. UNODC has been, I would say, a champion in setting up programs that prove the Effica effic efficacy uh, of reinforcing family relationships to understand, solve, or even prevent a range of social problems that were being addressed usually from the top down and didn't actually work so well. Uh, even when it was unpopular, the UNODC was working quietly in this area. We always come back to partnership, I think at the United Nations, especially mutually reinforcing support systems, which is a core uh, element of the success of the SDGs. And when functioning well, we understand as came out in this event today, that the family is surely one of the best mutually reinforcing support systems. Representing the Women's Federation, I spent this week at the Human Rights Council Working Group on the Right to Development, 
the debates in Geneva, that we're working on creating a legally binding covenant on the right to development. So the right to development seems to me so common sense, along with other rights like the right to the environment or you know, many other uh, as, de as depicted in the Universal Declaration. But the discussions this week became so complicated and nitpicky because I think we forget that if we don't think like a global community, if we don't think like a family, how interconnected we are, but think about our protecting our own needs, we get stuck every time. And the family is exactly that model that teaches us how you can let go and it works even better. Probably if we put more effort into supporting healthy families, we would have to rely less on creating heavy legal systems of enforcement of common sense human rights. So the discussion we had here today ultimately comes back to us and that is healthy. We civil society, members of families cannot expect government to solve our problems. It has to start locally. It has to begin with me as a parent, as a global citizen. Thank you again for those who have contributed to this very important event. Thank you very much, Mrs. Henschen, for your closing remarks. Very, very, thank you very much. And um, here with we come to the end of our uh, events. We hope um, that it could uh, contribute to the international call for comprehensive strategies for crime prevention towards social and economic, economic development. And um, yeah, we got a little bit over time, uh, but I hope we all uh, could uh, get inspiration of all our great speakers of today. And uh, here we want to formally close our session, but we would like to ask um, all speakers, including the embassies who are supporting us for a final uh, comment. And then we will make sure that afterwards uh, the questions will be uh, um, sent to the designated speakers so you will hear from them uh, directly. So may I start uh, with uh, the Embassy of the Philippines, Mrs. Irene Susan Natividad. Uh, Your Excellency, would you like to extend a last comment uh, on this event? Uh, well, just thank you for having us in this event. Um, it was good learning about the different um, projects and initiatives being undertaken by uh, your different partners, as well as uh, UNODC on um, using the family, which is a very potent uh, 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 factor. And um, it has a, an important role um, in creating peaceful peaceful societies in creating and fostering the culture of peace that we all strive for. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Natividad. And uh, Your Excellency, Mrs. Sim, could, would you like to extend a few closing remarks? Um, uh, I would like to, uh, to, to thank you all uh, speaker that uh, have uh, uh, provided the experience of uh, the uh, the how to uh, parent in their family uh, to make the peaceful in uh, their family uh, that that's enough thank you madam thank you so much uh, your excellency uh, for this remark and then I would like to um, tribute also our co-organizer, uh, co Mr. Patrick Erlinson. Thank you again for co-organizing with us, with Father Com. A last comment on your behalf. Um, yeah, it, it's so inspiring. I'm so grateful to everyone who is here. Um, I really hope that this in encourages and inspires more organizations globally to target fathers specifically, to get them engaged and, and to really encourage them to feel their necessity in, in character, the character development of their children. That we have too many fathers that are checking out and, and don't acknowledge how significant a role that they play. And so I hope that that changes. And also dealing with the number of men who are carrying scars and trauma into their families that's, that's impacting their kids. Um, and when, when fathers get it, they become better husbands. They become, they become better you know, as leaders in their community. 
Um, so fathers are just absolutely critical. And so I'm grateful for Women's Federation for, for acknowledging this um, and for all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Erlinson. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I think it, the, the work is great and I hope we can spread your work so we can work together and uh, with we men and women and strengthening families all together. Thank you so much for your contribution and for uh, co-organizing. And then I want to uh, give the floor to Mrs. Elhani. Thank you so much. Also, th thanks to the UNODC. Your last comments, please. Thank you so much. What an inspiring uh, event. The greatest gift we can give our children is our time. Time is love. So using that time effectively and engaging with our children is the greatest gift we can give them. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mrs. Khani. Mrs. Mayo, would you like to um, share one more closing? You know if you can unmute yourself. Yeah, I'm very grateful that I'm part of this event. Um, yeah, this for the family as this cornerstone of society should be the school of true love. Individuals should be able to learn about and develop the realms of heart. Enables individuals to become mature in heart, mature in their capacity to give and receive love. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And also for your presence, Mrs. Mayo, and your great work there in the Philippines. Thank you so much. And uh, yes, and I want to give the last word to uh, Dr. Maria Rio, the president of the UN team in um, Vienna. Thank you so much for organizing this event. Would you uh, like to share a last comment, please? So thank you very much, everybody who participated. And I hope we can take lots of inspiration for our daily life and also for our activities outside of our family, how we meet with others, how we listen to the needs of others that they can be understood and we can try to live in a peaceful world. So thank you very much. And I like to cooperate so we can exchange our email addresses and we can stay in touch for the next activities. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rio, for, uh, for your call to action. And that's actually our last point because we're closing uh, our UN side event, uh, but we would really like to stay in touch with everyone. So please follow us on Facebook. Um, we have prepared a slide with our contact information, but also on the bottom uh, of the invitation, you will find our Facebook page and also uh, all the uh, contact information of all the speakers you will find here on this slide. Uh, please don't hesitate to contact them to uh, connect with uh, them for all the beautiful projects they're doing so we can uh, support each other in doing even better things for a more peaceful world. So thank you all for attending and taking time uh, of your busy schedules to be with us here today. And here we, will, we want to conclude um, our contribution for uh, this 31st Commission of Crime Prevention and Criminal Justice. Thank you all and we wish you a beautiful day and a beautiful uh, weekend ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.